Hey there, it's Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is all about teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. So go ahead and click subscribe below if you want to make sure not to miss out on any future content. Today's video in particular, I'm talking about Flipgrid and giving you a brief tutorial on how it can be used and how it works and the potential for it in the college classroom, especially if you're teaching online and you're looking to create a more engaged student community. Next week's video will be about icebreakers for online teaching and Flipgrid is one of the tools I mentioned. So I wanted to make sure you had an understanding of how to use it before we get to that video. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in into my screen and I'll show you how this tool works. This page is my educator dashboard and I'm currently on my iPad rather than on the desktop, but it's very similar. So, you know, it's not gonna be a problem if you don't have an iPad and you're just using your laptop. As you can see here, I have two grids, the English 170 and the English 170 slash unit one. So I have these two examples just to kind of show you different ways you can set up your grids. So I can have, for example, one grid, the English 170, and then in that grid, just create topics, you know, throughout the whole semester. Or what you can do is you can have a grid, for example, per unit or even per week, but I don't think you need that many. So let's say, you know, unit one, which is five weeks long, and then you'll have a grid that's unit two, which is four weeks long, and so on and so forth. So those are two ways of doing it, because then you won't have so many topics in one grid. You'll only have the amount of topics that, you know, are included for unit one, and then you have a whole new grid for unit two, three, four, etc. So just kind of looking at this page, a few things to point out. The mixtapes, if you go up here, you can actually, you know, create a mixtape and then include videos from across the various topics that you've included in your grid. OK, so a grid is made up of multiple topics, which we'll see in a second. So here you can say, you know, maybe you have five different topics in you know, unit one. You can find what you consider to be the top videos across all five of those topics and make one mixtape for it is an example of how you can use that option. Now the Disco Library is public grids that you can find and use as inspiration. So that's something to keep in mind, but I you know, prefer to create my own stuff, but you can look at it for inspiration. Okay, so going back to my grids, I have the two, like I said, so as you can see here on the left, you can add a new grid, but what I'm first gonna do is show you the two that I created, okay? So currently I have the English 170 grid, and I, if you edit here with a little pencil, you can change the name, you can do a code, right? Which is how your students will find the grid. They'll just have that exact uh, website to go and find it. I have currently a password on it because I don't want anybody to just access it, but it doesn't need to have a password. It's only if you want to, which I prefer doing to keep it more private. Now, as you can see here, I currently have it set. The grid type is the educator learning community. So it's a public grid that I can share with educators in my network. But then you could also do you know, school email. So students join using Microsoft Google school email or student ID. So you can do that as well, right? In order to get them into your grid and only your students into the grid. Once you've made some changes, you can see features here. Um, as far as you, how often do you want to get notifications about, you know, submissions from your students? Do you want to have students, you know, be able to receive notifications and so on and so forth? So you can really go through and just customize it to the settings that you want it to have. I use one of the images from Flipgrid here because English 170 is a Trolls literature course and I thought this image was great. But you can also use your own file as well. And then you click update and all changes will be saved. All right, so as I said, English 170, if you have a grid for the whole semester, that's obviously one option. And then down here, I made a few sample topics for you to see. So in my icebreaker video, which is coming up actually next week, I believe, I mentioned that you can do an introduce yourself, you know, topic and then have students create videos for it. So if you click here on introduce yourself, you know, I designed this very simply and I had the instructions here. So welcome to English 170. Let's start to get to know one another by introducing ourselves in two minutes or less. OK, and then I have here's some information you might want to share and I list out these various prompts. Now, as you go down here, 
what your students will do is they'll click record a response, okay? And then they'll have to do this, right? Or they can just already, if they have it, already have it installed, just open it in the app. I'm currently on the Safari. Okay, so they create a response to it, they submit it, and then anybody in their class, in your class can see it. Now, as you notice here, if you go to the edit pencil, there's the title, the prompt, you have a thousand characters. And then here on the left here, you have recording time. And so this, you can actually say how long you want the video to be, uh, up to how long, right? And so I kept it very brief at two minutes, okay? Um, if moderated videos will be hidden from students until you activate them in case you're worried about inappropriate videos, I wouldn't think it'd be a major concern for college students, but it's up to you to decide. I currently have it on moderation just to show you that. Okay. Um, there's a little image that I have next to the topic. You can add a tip if you need to, to the topic, but I'll see that's not needed here. If you want to have longer instructions than the thousand characters, you could add an attachment that has, let's say, a PDF of instructions for that particular topic prompt. Okay, and then you can say, when is it open? You know, when does it freeze? So, for example, if you want to make sure the topic closes after a certain day or time, you can go ahead and do a freeze date so it becomes inactive at that point. Okay. And like I said, you can go through and figure out which options you want to keep and which ones you don't want to keep as far as liking and, you know, showing the view count and so on. And then keep going here. Once you have everything set up, you click again, update, and now it's all but updated. Okay. Uh, let's see here actions. If you open up this, so you can be, obviously you're editing the topic is one option, recording a response is another. Now, if you have add topic guest, let's say you want somebody, you know, either a coworker or someone who's guest speaking because they're an expert in whatever topic that, um, whatever topic that topic is, then you can have a guest come and be able to see the videos and create their own videos, right? And so you can do that if you want to have any guests. Now, add to Disco Library will again add it to that public library for anybody to use and see on Flipgrid. I wouldn't do that with your student's work. You can hide the topic so students don't see it. And then if so you click hide topic, then you can click action again, and then you can say activate topic so they can see it again. It's not a big deal. It doesn't, you know, shut down for the whole rest of the semester or anything. You can move the topic to, for example, another grade that you created. You can duplicate the topic if, for example, the prompt is very similar and you're having them do the same thing almost every week. You can just keep duplicating that topic and then just change and edit certain words or certain prompts in it to make it easier you know, to curate rather than trying to create a new one every single time when it's a very similar assignment. And then you could export the data. So if you want to export all the responses, you can go ahead and do that as a CSV file. So the, those are all the various actions you can do. Now the big thing here is the flip code. That's how students find this particular topic to go to. So they can just put that into the website and be able to find it very easily. Now let's go back to 170, okay? So you can also do the actions, find all the actions from this main page too. You can easily change it from active to frozen to hidden. So again, frozen if you don't want anybody else to respond, hidden if you don't want them to be, see, to be able to see it. You can also reorganize by clicking on the right here, the order of the topics. And so again, you know, this introduce yourself one is just like a first week small icebreaker. And then as other examples might go, so week one, favorite children's book, right? In your video response, tell us about your favorite children's book, some things to mention in any order in the video might be, and then here's a few prompts, and then keep your video under three minutes, looking forward to hearing about your favorites. And so again, they click record a response and they'd be able to do that. And then students could also respond to each other as well. And so I have four things here. You can do a lot of various activities using this, you know, app, but it is videos, right? So it's not, you know, text-based or anything along those lines. It's all about 
you know, sharing and engaging with, you know, fellow students in, especially your online classroom, so you can see each other and get a sense of your mannerisms and your personality. I feel it could be a great way of really creating a community in your online course that can be harder to do, you know, just using your regular LMS. So you can always check out and check with your institution to see if Flipgrid is one of the approved apps by the institution or kind of just ask an advisor or somebody in your department to get a sense of it's, you know, an okay app to use. It is used, you know, constantly by K through 12 instructors. So it shouldn't be a big issue, but you can always double check. Now, over here, you see next to the flip code, add a co-pilot. If you're co-teaching, you can go ahead and invite a co-pilot to be able to also edit and create topics and review videos, etc. Okay, and so now I'll just show you really quickly to add a new topic, you just click, add a new topic, right? You have a topic title. So, you know, for example, maybe you're gonna have students do a quick self-assessment of unit one whatever that activity is. And I do have some ideas for, you know, final major projects that you might have your students do in an online course, or just if you wanna be digital, rather than doing an exam. So I'll go ahead and link that um, above here and also below my description box in case you're curious about those types of activities. Okay, but then you have again the prompt, so you can just say, you know, you just completed unit one, so maybe they had to create an anti bibliography, right? You know in you know five five minutes or less go ahead and share with us what your hypothesis was that you were researching along with what you consider to be the top three sources that you found tell us a bit about the information that you found in them who wrote it for example what were the main key points um, and then after you do that go ahead and share you know what you think is the most important thing you learned by doing this assignment right so whatever it is you want to say in a prompt and again if you don't have enough then you can just say potentially see attached PDF. And then you have the five minutes. You can again decide to moderate or not. If you wanna have an image next to the title, like the ones that I have, you can go ahead and choose which one you wanna use here. There's obviously a lot of options. So I'm gonna go ahead and do add a Giphy or Jiffy. And since it's a self-assessment about research, I'm gonna look up research. And then, let's see, anyone in particular that I like, I'll go with this one right here. And you select it, and then you go ahead and you click more, and you can add the tip if you need to. And here again is where you add an attachment decide when it launches, if there's a freeze date, and then whatever features you want to include here. Once you do that, click Create. Now you know you can use this code to share with your students so they can access the topic. All set. And there it is, okay? So if you go back to English 170, it appears at the top of the list. So if you want to keep it organized, can go ahead and lower it to the bottom. So this is English 170 all in one grid, but again, you can also separate it each unit or week, or wherever the case may be, into different grids. And so now this is specifically about unit one. And so for example, you can have, you know, in the second week on Monday, here's a homework assignment for you to do, okay? Um, and then they can record their response. You know, week three, you're gonna propose an infographic, okay? So that's it in a nutshell. All you basically do is you sign up, you get access to this, your dashboard, you create as many grids and as many topics as you'd like, and then each grid has a different code that students use, okay? So this grid, for example, the code is English 170 Unit 1. Right, And so in order for them to access that, all they have to do is do flipgrid.com slash and then that code. And like I said, I protected it with a password just so it's not public, you know, at the moment. And then each individual 
topic also has a code that students can use in order to access it. So here's a code here, E4AB542A. And so they would do the same thing, you know, flipgrid.com and then that code. And just one final point, this grid pals up here. I didn't mention it before because I have my uh, profile hidden, but you could also make it active and you can actually connect with other educators in classrooms from around the world. As you can see, there's quite a few of them, right? So if you wanna do something a bit more collaborative, you might consider that potential to do some research and see if that's an option you wanna take advantage of. But I would just keep at least to keep it simple for now with just creating your grids and sharing it with your students only. I have quite a few other videos that connect to other ed tech tools that you might find useful, as well as tips for online teaching. So you can see the full playlist below in case you're interested in that. Go ahead and click the like button to let me know if you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions about Flipgrid, go ahead and send them in the comments below and I'll answer them as soon as possible. I'll see you next week with a video on icebreakers for online courses.